Finally, after 3,000 years, it is time to create this best team. You guys have been asking so long, and it made me go crazy. But we're here, aren't we, Dan? We are here indeed, Mystic. With what we have concluded to be the statistically best team for Kalos, so don't come here complaining if your favorite isn't on this team. Exactly. Trust me, I wanted to put Gardevoir, Umbreon, and Sylveon on here, but I couldn't because this isn't a favorite list, but instead the best contenders to take on the Kalos League. Speak for yourself, I had to sacrifice the great Gudra from this list. Yeah, it's quite the tragedy, but this audience has been literally waiting for four months for this team. So let me just get straight into what we look for for team members in case you guys are new to my best team series. We look for Pokemon that can help you have the best possible experience for Kalos, meaning that it works great against the gym leaders, Elite Four members, Champion, Rivals, Evil Team, and for X and Y as an added bonus, AZ. As always, there too will be no egg moves or tutor moves, especially because in Kalos there is no move tutor aside from Draco Meteor and the three starter moves being Hydra Cannon, Frenzy Plant, and Blast Burn. And the pledge attacks if those are even in the games anymore, I have no idea, who cares? Welcome to the Kalos region. A region full of beauty. Not a big surprise as it's based off of France and Paris, but it's a lovely place. We've gotten a message from our neighbors to meet up in Aquacord Town, so let's go meet the gang and pick up our first member of the team. With the help of our good friend Arizo and his partner True Green 7, they concluded that the best starter for our journey is going to be the Bubble Frog Pokemon, Froki. Trust me, I'm kinda shocked too actually. I thought it was going to be Chessman, but you guys can click the i card in the right corner to Arizo's video about how Froki is statistically the best starter. So now we have our starter, but it's no good without a moveset. So why don't we look at what Greninja can learn and see what will help us out on our journey. Arizo and Trugun will take care of what battles Greninja is going to do best in, but we can still give it a great moveset. And with Greninja, literally anything is powerful. There's a reason it is that powerful, even without Protean. One small factor though, Froki doesn't exactly do well in the first gym, so what we recommend to do is to pick up a flying Pokemon such as Pidgey or Fletchling to help take on Viola. Or if you want to go through the extra effort and be the cool kid on the block, trade your Bunnelby for a Farfetch from the hiker towards the left house in the city. This will make your time against Viola much easier, and then later on you can substitute out with the better flying Pokemon we will obtain on our journey. So for our stab we made our Greninja be the Surf Pokemon. But this is by no means a bad thing, since Surf is one of the only strong HMs in the game, with the other being Waterfall. Surf has a base power of 90, which is really nice, with no drawbacks. You can also run Waterfall, the base 80 power physical move, but you get it so late in the game, so Surf is just overall a better option. For our second stab, we chose Night Slash, which can be learned to Greninja at the Mover Learner in Dendemil Town for a hard scale. So you can have that on lockdown for Olympia Psychic types. The reason why we didn't choose Dark Pulse is because you get it so late in the game that by then it would only be useful against Malvas Chandelure, which we have Water Stab for, a Wickstrom's Aegislash, and Diantha's Gorgeist. But if you want to go the special route, just swap out Night Slash for Dark Pulse. For coverage, it's not that hard for Greninja to be honest. Ice Beam and Acrobatics. For the Grass types and Fighting types. Ice Beam is great for Drazna's Dragon Team and certain matchups on Deanthus Team. This TM can be picked up from Wolfric after you defeat him at the last gym. This last one we decided on was Grass Knot. Greninja has other powerful attacks, only problem is a lot of those moves are late game, so the best option was Grass Knot. Grass Knot is handy against a lot of those water types, such as Tyranno's Crawdont or Seabold's team if you're in a gym. This TM can be picked up from Ramos after you defeat him. So now we have our starter. Time to head on over to Professor Sycamore and thank him. But there's a slight surprise. After a quick battle against the Kanto starters, he tells us we can pick one, and here's where we pick up our second Pokemon of our best team. Arizo may have covered the best Kalos starter, but the best Kanto starter for Kalos, just like in Kanto, is Bulbasaur, and sooner or later, Venusaur. What's so great about Venusaur, you may ask? Well, first of all, it synergizes extremely well with Greninja being a grass and poison type, and it has a mega evolution with the ability Thick Fat, which makes it take fire and ice moves better than it normally would in its normal form. Venusaur's role on the team is a tank-like where it can dish out some good damage, but it's better at taking hits than being a nuisance to the NPC. They are definitely going to have a hard time beating this guy. Honestly, this is my favorite Kanto starter and the best starter for Kanto, so I love the fact we get to use this superstar again. Venusaur gets a lot of grass moves via level up, so literally just use every level up grass move until the next upgrade. The final ones we selected though are Energy Ball and then Venoshock, and then later upgrading the Sludge Bomb. Energy Ball can be found in the Pokemon Village, Venoshock on Route 6 towards the Palace, and Sludge Bomb can be found more late game on Route 19. 
The Bulbasaur line helps out great against Grant, Ramos' Go-Goat, Valerie's Sylveon, and if you feel gutsy with Thick Fat Mega Venusaur, use it against Wolf Frick's Abomasnow. It's also helpful against Tierno's Crawdon and Trevor's Florgus. It's also great for Seabold's team and does naturally well against Lysander's Mega Gyarados, along with helping out against four members of Diantha's team, though I don't recommend using it against a Gardevoir. It even does well against AC's Golurk. Coverage time. Due to us not using any egg moves and the lack of tutor moves in X and Y, the best coverage is honestly Bulldoze and then later on Earthquake. Bulldoze can be obtained really early in the game at the Southern Pokemon Center in Lumio City for a whopping total of 10k. Then Earthquake can be found more late game towards Route 22 after some confusing puzzle. Have fun! This ground coverage comes in clutch for some of Clement's team, Valerie's Mawile, Trevor's Raichu, Serena or Kalem's Jolteon, Team Flare with all the poison types, Solosia's team, and Brioni's Bisharp. If you want to use Venusaur against Malva with that thick fat though, see how it can do, and Earthquake everything. She owns a Talonflame of course, so be careful of that. Speaking of Route 6 where we find Venishok, that's also where we find our next member of the team being the Sword Pokemon. Really Game Freak? Nothing more? Okay then. The Sword Pokemon Honedge, which later will be the nice and clean Aegislash. The reason why we're getting Aegislash is because Steel and Ghost is stupid good in Kalos. Like it resists basically everything, is immune to three type things being normal fighting and poison, which is really funny because dealing with Karina is a piece of cake. The only thing that can even face you is Machoke with Rock Tomb, everything else you're immune to. This sword and shield is too broken for X and Y, so let's give it a broken moveset for Stab. Move 1, Iron Head. Move 2, Shadow Ball. For earlier moves, Shadow Sneak is literally the best move you can get for its ghost typing. And for steel typing, TM74 Gyro Ball is great for its trash speed and monstrous attack. So this sword laughs at most gym leaders, those being Grant because it resists and has super effective stab, Karina because her fighting types can touch it like mentioned before, Ramos has nothing except for Bulldoze on his Go-Goat, Valerie and her fairies are not at the mercy of Dewblade, Olympia gets screwed over by the ghost typing, and Steel resists Psychic. But Dewblade has a pretty bad spadef stat, so be aware. After beating Olympia, you can find the Dusk Stone to evolve Dewblade in the Terminus Cave. We will leave a link to a video on how to find it in the description. Wolfric can't touch Aegislash with his Ice types, and Steel is of course super effective. As for the Elite Four, you can deal with most of Drasen's team, barring the Neuvern because it has Flamethrower, and Wickstrom has his own Aegislash, which comes down to who uses it better. Against Diantha, you're good for Halucha and for the Fossils. You should be good for the Gorgas, but the Gudra and Gardevoir are tricky, as Gudra has Fire Blast and Gardevoir has Shadow Ball. You also deal pretty well with AC, Sigilyph, and Golurk, since the only move it has to hit you with is Phantom Force. Coverage honestly comes down to your choice and how you actually want to use Aegislash. Do you want to set up with Swords Dance? Do you want to spam King Shield to lower the attack of your opponent when he uses a physical attack? We've actually thought of one, and we decided to go for Sacred Sword and King Shield. Sacred Sword can be mover learned right after Dewblade evolves into Aegislash or at level 51, but honestly, why would you keep it as a Dewblade for so long? Sacred Sword can deal with Wolfric, Shauna's Delcati, Tierno's Crawdont, Serena or Kalem's Absol, Brioni's team, Mabel's Weavile, Aliana's Mydiana, Wickstrom's Probopass, Seabold's Barbarical, Diantha's Aurorus, and Tyrantrum. This team is coming along really nicely, but uh, what are we gonna get now, Mystic? Well, that's easy. We haven't gotten our flyer yet, and I think it's time to bring back an old friend from the best team for Hoenn, Crobat. I love this Pokemon, and I'm glad we get to use it again. Crobat is just so good with its bulkiness, speed, and pretty good attack stat along with its poison typing coming in handy for a lot of the newly introduced fairy types around. Though we have Venusaur for that, hey, Crobat is still faster than Venusaur. We came down to a close tie between Talonflame, Staraptor, and Crobat. Talonflame's fire typing isn't really all that useful. Staraptor is also very good, but the problem we have with it is it only has wing attack and aerial ace until level 51 where it gets Brave Bird, and Brave Bird has recoil making it good with shorthanded teams. Crobat is just better because it doesn't have recoil, but it does have acrobatics with 110 base power without holding an item. And of course you need fly for it. I know Zubat is slow to train in the beginning, and it takes happiness, but it's worth it. To make it easier, you can even obtain the Soothe Bell, which is next to the Pokemon Center in Shalor City. Put your starter Pokemon to the front of the party, and she should give it to you at that point in the game. Give it to your Golbat, and you should have a Crobat in no time at all. Crobat is really nice to help deal with Ramos because of its poison and flying typing, quad resisting grass types. It's also really useful against Valerie if you can teach it cross poison for the Sylveon and Mr. Mime. Unfortunately, it isn't really good against Mawile, but that's why we have our other members for the Pokemon. Crobat can help out against Lissandra and his Mianxiao, which you can get out really fast. 
It's also somewhat useful against Diantha with her poison and flying typing to deal with Mega Gardevoir and Gorgeist. Gardevoir's defense stat is not so good, so cross poison should do her in, and acrobatics is a huge chunk to Gorgeist. Crobat's coverage only lets you use so much, but we've decided that X Scissor is probably the best. X Scissor takes care of psychic types and dark types, and it can be found really early in the game after you obtain Surf and have access to Azura Bay. It can be useful for Olympia if you want to take out some of her psychic types at low HP with that 130 base speed stat. It also does well against Wolfric's Abomasnow, Tyrannos Crawdont, Serena or Kalem's Absol, Brioni's Leopard, Mabel's Weavile, and Seabold's Starmie. For the last move, just give it Fly. I know it sucks, but do you really want to walk everywhere or consistently go back to the PC for a flying Pokemon? Heading over to Amber Town, we find the next Pokemon on our best team, Journey, and that Mon is none other than the normal electric type generator Pokemon, Helioptile, and later on, Heliolisk. In order to get Heliolisk, we're going to need the Sunstone, which can be found in Shallow City after you've beaten Karina in the Tower of Mastery. Simply go to a hiker to the right of the Pokemon Center and give him the Intriguing Stone, and he will give you a Sunstone for it. Heliolisk is a really nice addition as it is a strong special attacker and fast electric type, which is incredible against the first Lysander battle for his Murkrow and Gyarados, it's also nice for the second battle against Honchkrow and Mega Gyarados, just not as strong obviously. It's great against Seabold and his water team, Heliolisk can also help out against Trevor's Aerodactyl and Tyrannos Talonflame and Crawdon. In the early game, Helioptile can be useful for Ramos' Jumpluff, as it can't really touch Helioptile, we also decided to pick Heliolisk over Jolteon because the coverage is just better. Heliolisk honestly has more of a better special attack than physical attack stat, so we're just going to focus on those sorts of moves. The first move being Thunderbolt and the second move being Volt Switch. Like I said, it lacks the physical attack stat and it only has physical normal attacks. Hyper Voice is great, but the only problem is, is it's ORS tutor move only. Thunderbolt is great because of that 90 base power and 100% accuracy. Volt Switch is to get out of sticky situations and to take advantage of that 109 speed stat. For coverage, we're going with Focus Blast and Surf. Surf is relatively easy to find once you're done with the Mega Evolution business in Shalor City. Serena or Kaelin will give you the HM once you're about to leave for your next destination. Focus Blast can be bought at the Anastar City Pokemon Center Mart. Surf is really easy for taking out its main weakness being ground, and even some rock types with aiding against a lot of the trainers along the way. Focus Blast is just really strong with 120 power, just watch out for that 70 accuracy. That can take on still types and such. Both of these moves can output well against Shauna's Delphox, Serena's Absol, Brioni's team, Aliana's Mightyena, Lysandra's Pyro, Malva's team, Wickstrom's team aside from Aegislash, Deantha's Tyrantrum and Aurorus, and AZ's Torkoal and Golurk. Now we're missing that one last Pokemon, the anchor of this team. On Route 12 in the Wasteland by the Power Plant, we're gonna find ourselves the most adorable Shark Dragon lurking around. I'm of course talking about Gibble and soon to be Garchomp and Mega Garchomp. If you want, of course. The Mega Stone can be obtained at the Victory Road, but to obtain it, you need someone to temporarily have Rock Smash, and you need to have the uh, from 8 to 9 p.m. Mega Stone Hunt event on, which can be done after the Legendary event where AC's weapon gets fired off. Remember how I talked about how we're going to have something for Valerie Smallwell? Well, what better than the Earthquaking Monster himself? This is also going to be our main check to Clemon and his array of electric types, as they can't really touch Gabite, which is uh, what it will be at the time, because it evolves one level after you capture it. Garchomp is also really useful for Malvin or Fire types, Wickstrom and Steel types, Dianthus, Tyrantrum, Auroras, and Gudra. It's also really good against Lysander and his Pyroar, AC and his Torkoal, and most of Team Flare in general. Honestly, its stat move set is pretty straightforward. Bulldoze and Dual Chop for its starting one, and then later Earthquake and Dragon Claw. Dragon Rush doesn't have 100% accuracy, and Dig, who wants to wait another turn to attack? All of these moves are accessible via level up, aside from Bulldoze and Earthquake. We explain where to get those TMs earlier. Coverage is pretty cool with Garchomp, you can run quite a few moves, however, we choose Flamethrower, or Fire Blast and Crunch. Fire Blast is easy access at Anastar City Pokemon Center Mart, or you can wait for Flamethrower from the Hex Maniac right below the Mart, but it is a random chance out of 4 TMs, so uh, you might have to be a little bit patient. Either move is fine, Flamethrower is just better because of accuracy. Fire Blast can work too though, so it all comes down to what you want, accuracy or power, your choice. Crunch you get automatically as a level up move when Gabba evolves into Garchomp. These moves can be put to work against Olympia if it's evolved already, Wolfric's team, just be careful. Shauna's Delphox, Tierno's Roserade, Serena's Meowstic and Chestnut, Brioni's Bisharp, Mabel's Weavile, Wickstrom's Scizor, Deantha's Gorgeist, as well as AZ's Sigilith and Golurk. 
Well, you guys, that was the best team for Kalos. This team is definitely very viable and can help you out against a lot of the trials of the Kalos region, even though it is considered as pretty easy. These are our six Pokemon we've chosen. I know you guys probably have a lot to say about this team, so I'm going to ask what Pokemon would you have put on the team? Start a discussion in the comment section below. After six of these, I know how crazy some of the discussions can get, so be mindful of others' opinions as well. Also, thank you to Dan for joining me. Anything you have planned for your channel? Well, if you guys want to join over to my channel, a link will be in the description and in the iCard, uh, you can see me and Mystic count down the top 5 best competitive Pokemon from Gen 6. We will be primarily focusing on single battles in the Smogon 6v6 format, and not VGC sadly as I'm not a VGC player. Hope to see you guys there, and with that we're gonna get out. Bye! Well, you heard him. Go check him out. If you guys enjoyed this video though, be sure to leave a like and share this video with a friend. With that being said though, I'm Mystic Umbreon and I will see you in the future for some more Pokemon content.